we're moving into our very last, very brief session. I would like to introduce Charles Frankston, who is the technical director at Archive. And he's going to gather us together with some closing remarks and just thinking about next steps. Thank you so much, Charles. Hi there. Um, actually, Shamsi and Jonathan, if you want to keep that last panel on the screen, that's fine with me. Uh, because I may get into my prepared remarks, but first I want to talk a little bit about what Archive is doing in this space. Uh, since Diane knows, but his panel didn't quite get to it. But let me let me just get started talking about what I want to fill people in with, uh, with respect to Archive specifically. Um, as most, I don't know if, if all the attendees understand that presently, Archives content is 90% submitted in XM and tech, generally uh, LaTeX. Um, and we convert it to PDF for everyone to view. You can download the tech, but we but then you just have a file on your machine. So you know when you click on an article and read it, what you get is PDF. And at the moment, it is not necessarily accessible PDF. We have a little accessibility filter we run, but I don't think it's very satisfactory because as Frank Middlebeck pointed out, uh, a lot of what you need to make properly tagged PDF has been lost before it even gets to the end of the LaTeX, LaTeX converter. So Diane and friends started this project a few years ago called AR5IV, which took the uh, entirety of archives content at the time, well, most of the entirety, I can get into that. Um, and made it, converted it to HTML using the LaTeX XML converter uh, that Diane and Bruce Miller at NIST uh, have created over the past many years. Um, it is by no means 100% successful. In fact, um, somewhere around, uh, Diane, was it 30% or 20% of the articles don't convert? We have uh, two and a half percent don't convert at all, and so twenty five percent of the articles have errors conversion. Right. Um, and from my own observation, even if you look at the articles where LaTeX XML didn't output errors, it doesn't mean that the math is rendering correctly on the screen. Um, it's actually possible to have the math render incorrectly for a sighted person. And I think for the math jacks uh, connection to the screen readers to make it better for for, audio, for screen readers than it is. Anyway, um, we aim to improve that, um, but it's not easy um, for reasons that Ulrich and others and Frank can get into. And Dan, there, there's a lot of technical challenges to doing this. But one of the things we have decided at Archive is that we're, um, instead of the AR5 IV project, which is now somewhat awkward, you have to go replace the X in Archive with a five, and then you see the HTML papers. We're going to be, in the next few months, uh, presenting the HTML versions of the papers on the page where you view the papers. Um, and we know the HTML won't be correct, so we'll probably um, put a banner in saying, you know, this is experimental. This is not necessarily, if you want, you know, the, the version of the paper blessed by the author, here's the PDF. The other thing we're working on right now is since we know that there will be problems with the paper, we're going to ask the entire archive community to find the problems for us. So we're, we're working on a UI right now where you can click or right click at a point in the paper and say, hey, this equation is wrong or whatever is wrong about it. So we're hoping to generate lots of effort, lots of bug reports for Diane to get, you know, LaTeX XML fixed and improve our uh, support here. We're going to do the same thing for new submissions at a certain point in time. Right now, when you submit your tech, we compile the tech and we show it to you show it to the author, the author, you know, gets to fix the tech if the PDF doesn't look right. I'm going to try to do the same for HTML, that we'll show the author the HTML, the, or, the author can get to, to fix the text, et cetera. So that's, that's some of what we're doing going on at Archive. 
There was another question early in the session about people who wanted to annotate what's on archive, uh, et cetera. Um, our opinion, my opinion, as the technical director of archives is uh, there's lots of third party sites right now that do things with our content. I think it would be lovely if people want to start discussion groups, et cetera, do it off of archive, maybe make a labs thing if you want a little bit of space on the archive page, uh, on the abstract page to get people to the article. But, you know, let's, let's experiment outside of archive. This isn't something archive is gonna do in its core services in the near future. Uh, I, th this goes to a lot of other things, including, uh, you know, double blind peer review or open peer review, article ratings, et cetera. There's, and there are people working on this. There's a whole lot of stuff that can be done in terms of democratizing, uh, not just now as we've done the, the access to the article, but the whole ecosystem around, around what review should look like in the future and ratings, et cetera, uh, beyond traditional peer review. And that's what I'm saying off the cuff. I had some, pre my prepared remarks were mostly about um, noticing how far we've come, um, especially a lot of the participants in the early part of the session, uh, a lot of the blind and people with other impairments were saying 20 years ago, 30 years ago when they started their career, how things were difficult. I remember, uh, uh, someone I knew at MIT, and I think I saw her. I don't know if she stuck around in the audience. Um, you know, having having friends and others uh, help read the content for her, um, and now so much of that content is available without needing assistance. As Jonathan Godfrey said this morning, 2022 was the first time he could basically do his job without assistance from other people. Um, and I attribute it to the digital revolution, which has been going on for 50 or more years now. You know, it's, it's the invention of the computer. It's the encoding of information in digital form, which was accelerated miraculously by Tim Berners-Lee inventing the World Wide Web uh, and thus, and, and making it available worldwide, I, I think. Is it the EU that considers access to the internet and the web to be a fundamental human right? I believe so, yes. It is my belief, without having any data in hand, that this has enabled participation of people with impairments in all sorts of activities that normally required previously kept kept all but a handful of participants. The handful of participants are the ones who had the determination and access to the resources to get you know, the Braille versions of the textbooks for those textbooks that had Braille versions and how many scientific papers had Braille versions, et cetera. Um, that the fact that nearly all this information is now encoded in digital form and typically online enables us to do so much more. Um, that doesn't mean we're done. Because um, simply, as this panel knows, simply trying to take an article written in LaTeX La and presenting it in good accessible HTML uh, has quite a lot of technical challenges. But I believe those are challenges that can be overcome in the next few years. And I'm gonna also make a pitch for funding. So we're doing this work to make our articles more accessible, et cetera, and archive. We're doing it without any explicit funding to do so. So if there's anyone left around still listening who knows some foundations or others that would like to put up some money for this, uh, I'm CBF or Charles at archive.org. <laughs> Send me a note. <laughs> uh, you know, right now I mostly have students doing the work, which is one of the advantages of working at a university is, is uh, you know, we it, it's interesting work, it's interesting training for students and it produces interesting results for archive. Uh, but it'd be great if we could, you know, had the money to put some mainstream resources and really accelerate the effort. And that's, I think, three minutes left, all I have to say for now. Does Do any of the panelists want to unmute themselves and ask questions? If I may segue here. So now that I'm not a moderator, 
let, let me talk about R5 a little bit more. Um, we have not done thorough accessibility testing on R5. We know that we most often pass the Web W3C accessibility guidelines or WCAG. Uh, most R5 pages do pass those. However, that does not mean the, accessi the accessible output of our articles is flawless. So this is similar to what uh, Charles remarked about even documents without errors may have uh, like typesetting issues that are not automatically caught by a conversion pro process. It's even more true for accessibility where we don't even have a standard set of proof listening tools that we can agree everybody should be using to proof listen to the article. And I, we have slowly started this year um, to focus on the minutia. So things like inline marks, footnote marks, citations, references, uh, fleshing them out. We will appreciate definitely this uh, offer of reports from the archive community to make uh, like the whole space explored and known so that we can address all of the bugs eventually. Uh, but we need to provide accessible walks through every single piece of the document. And I was counting this morning for, for the session, how many rules we have, how many distinct kinds of content we style with CSS. There are roughly 50. So there, what is a scientific article in R5? Currently it's about 50 kinds of content, starting from the footnote marks, going all the way up to table of contents and bibliographies. And we should proof listen to all 50 kinds of content. Christopher from Archive had this great suggestion of creating an article that just exhibits as much as possible as we can imagine from the Latin system and use that as a torture test. So all of this work needs to happen this year and it would be wonderful to, to just progress and uh, be able to say something like the average R5 article can be listened to with ease uh, a year from now. That'd be wonderful. And it won't, they won't be R5. They'll just, they'll just be the HTML version of an archive article. So I'm going to have to jump in here. Very sadly, we've reached, we're just past five o'clock. So I want to deeply, deeply thank all of our panelists, all of our participants, all of the presenters. This was really fascinating. Uh, let's please keep these conversations going. We'll be sharing the recordings of all sessions so we can get this message out more widely. And um, please continue the conversation in the Q&A now or on the forum website in the discussion boards. I think we have a lot of really fascinating things to talk about. And uh, everybody, thank you again so, so much. <laughs>